Hello and welcome to Excel tip number nine. In this video we're going to cover line charts, scatter charts, and how to put a secondary axis on the chart. So let's start with our same um, city data. And let's just do, instead of doing a column or a bar, we're going to do a line chart with this data. So to me, the line chart is probably not the best way to represent this data. Um, but it it's, sort of covers the same thing as a bar chart. And again, I could change the title, and I would try to do the access titles if I was doing it correctly. So a line chart's OK for this, but not, I would say, a bar chart's probably way better, or a column chart. So let's get rid of that for now. So, but let's now do a secondary axis. What if I want to plot both of these on the same graph? So if, again, I go to Insert and Recommended Charts, let's go ahead and do it on um, a clustered column and see what happens. The problem is it has a population, and if I move this a little bit, has a population on there, but the population numbers are so much bigger than the crime rate that you can't really see both on the same graph. So what you can do is you can go and we can you know change the tar chart type again, which you can um, go up here to change car chart type. And we're going to do a combo. So what a combo does is it gives us the, the option to do a secondary axis. And so this gives us a little bit of, you know, more leeway as to how we do this. And we can even choose, you know, to make our secondary axis or to make our second line um, any of any of the options here. So we're going to keep that as line and keep it as a clustered column. And let's see what this chart lines up looking like. So now we see the population and we see the crime rate. And this is sort of going to get bring us to our second one. So what, what a secondary axis is, the population is on this side. So the blue bar is measured on this side, and the red is measured on this side. So we sort of see, you know, what's going on with, with, with this. And actually, a sort of pattern emerges. With Wilmington and with Camden, um, there's very high crime rates. And with New York, which has a big population, there's very low crime rates. So this shows a little bit of that trend. But what if I wanted to plot now crime rate versus population. So to get an idea of the you know, correlation between the two of them. So let's go ahead and get rid of this chart. And remember, so what I'm going to do is see this sort of correlation between crime rate and population. So what I'm going to do is now insert and see what the recommended charts come up. So this combo chart, um, you know, the line chart there shows up. Some other charts show up, but the really interesting one here is the scatter. So the scatter chart is used to compare at least two sets of values or pairs of data and use it to show relationship between sets of values. That's the big thing. Use it to show relationship between sets of values. So before, we sort of saw that relationship when we did that combo chart. We had the line and the column in the same chart. But let's go ahead and hit OK and see what this looks like. So, and I'm going to go ahead and just increase the size a little bit. So crime rates is on the left side, and population is on the x-axis or the bottom. So what happens in just, and this might not be the case for all, all cities, but for the cities we chose, what happens is we see a, as population increases, crime rate decreases. I think this is really interesting, and it might be because we chose small cities with very high crime rates, Wilmington, Delaware, and Camden. But it's the same is true for Baltimore and um, Philadelphia and Washington, D.C., which are all around this area. And they all have higher crime rates than New York City, which is this bubble here. So that is something you can do. You can compare two sets of data with a scatter plot, and it's a great thing to do. And um, it's something that you, know, you can really, really get some you know, insight into the data by doing this, just like we saw here. So since it's really cool, I want to show you one more. Let's do the crime rates versus the median household income. So the median household income's here, 
and the crime rate is here. And again, if I was to hand this in, I would make access titles. But you can see that there's sort of a correlation between if the if there's a very high crime rate, there's a low household income. And, you know, some things, this bubble sort of breaks the trend. But there's, a, in general, there's that sort of trend overall. And again, so we can sort of see these trends um, sort of appear once we can use scatter plots instead of our clustered plots. All right, that's where we're going to end this video. Thank you for watching.